1954, the United States Supreme Court handed down a landmark decision in Brown v. Board of Education. Unanimously, the justices of the Supreme Court declared that the segregation of schools violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Southerners opposed the decision causing conflict in southern states. Brown was the beginning of the civil rights movement in America and at the same time it was the beginning of the end of the era of segregation and Jim Crow laws. Following the Civil War, the United States government passed three amendments to the Constitution. The 13th Amendment prohibited slavery. The 14th Amendment granted citizenship for both those born in the U.S. and equal protection to all citizens. The 15th Amendment gave African American men the right to vote. There were 11 former Confederate states that passed laws known as the Black Codes that placed limits on African American freedoms. The Black Codes laid the foundation for Jim Crow's separate but equal status, which was upheld by the Supreme Court in Plessy v. Ferguson. The laws restricted African American access to public places such as schools, shops, stores, water fountains, trains, buses, and other public places. Jim Crow laws enforced racial segregation in the South from the beginning of the Reconstruction era through the 1960s. Despite the decision in Plessy, the fight to end segregation continued. The NAACP was founded in 1909 for racial equality to try and persuade the Congress to pass laws. In 1930, the NAACP's Legal Defense and Educational Fund tried to make Congress an overcoming discrimination. The Legal Defense was led by Charles Hamilton Houston and Thurgood Marshall. They felt that Jim Crow laws were the most vulnerable in the area of education. Between 1935 and 1950, they brought cases of discrimination in higher education before the courts and won. By the early 1950s, they began representing families fighting segregation and equality in public schools. On April 23, 1951, 16-year-old Barbara Johns led her classmates in a walkout at Robert Russo Moton High School in Farmville, Virginia. Barbara was the niece of civil rights activist Vernon Johns. She was tired of the poor schooling conditions and secondhand supplies while her white peers had modern facilities and updated textbooks. Johns' school was small and overcrowded. They had to hold two classes in the same room and some were held on the school bus. Small freestanding buildings made of plywood and tar paper were also constructed on school grounds to hold classes. We were uh, denied a lot of things. We were not able to go to the local movie and sit in the white section. We were not allowed to uh, have a a uh, school that was comparable to the white students. Our uh, school had um, used secondhand books and we didn't have a gym or cafeteria and we just did not have any of the uh, same things that the white school had. So we grew up segregated and feeling, you know, not too good about what was going on. Johns contacted Spotswood Robinson and Oliver Hill at the NAACP who agreed to take the case. The case representing 117 students would become known as Davis V. County School Board of Prince Edward County, Virginia. In Topeka, Kansas, Linda Brown, a third grader at Mono Elementary, had to walk blocks from her home through the Rock Island line switching yard to catch the bus. When she was denied entry to a school just blocks from her home, her father, along with other local families representing 20 students, filed suit. The Davis case, Bowling v. Sharp, Briggs v. Elliott, and Belton v. Gibhart, along with Brown, were argued before the Supreme Court and would become known as Brown v. Board of Education. Because I would get halfway to the school bus stop, which was a seven block walk from my home. I could only make half that walk because the cold would get too bitter for a small child to bear. I can still remember starting that bitter walk and the terrible cold that would cause my tears to freeze upon my face. Thurgood Marshall and a team of lawyers argued that segregated schools were not equal and therefore violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Attorney Robert Carter presented evidence from the Dahl test conducted by Dr. Robert and Mamie Clark. 
Their study found that when asked which color doll they identify with, African American children selected the white doll, showing that segregation negatively affected their self worth. On May 17, 1954, Chief Justice Earl Warren read in the court's unanimous decision that to separate children solely because of their race generates a feeling of inferiority that may affect their hearts and minds in a way likely to ever be undone. In the field of public education, separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. Any language in Plessy v. Ferguson contrary to this finding is rejected. It is so ordered. The court predicted that southern states would object to their ruling. To compromise, the court ordered that their decision was to be implemented with all deliberate speed. This meant they could integrate schools slowly. African American children faced conflict as they integrated schools. A group of congressmen led by Senator Harry S. Byrd of Virginia issued a Southern Manifesto accusing the Supreme Court of a clear abuse of judicial power and claimed the decision is unconstitutional. In Virginia, public schools were closed for five years as a form of massive resistance. A collection of laws regarding attention and grants to private academies were passed to stop the integration of public schools. Crowds of angry people attempted to stop the desegregation of public schools in Texas, Tennessee, and elsewhere. Intimidation, threats, and violence were used as tactics to scare African Americans attempting to attend white schools. Virginia's defiance prompted other politicians like Alabama Governor George Wallace and Arkansas Governor Orville Faubus to speak out against school integration. Units of the National Guard have been and are now being mobilized with the mission to maintain or restore the peace and good order of this community. Advanced units are already on duty on the grounds of Central High School. Governor Orville Faubus called in the National Guard at Little Rock Central High School in an attempt to block nine African American students from attending the school, forcing President Eisenhower to send federal troops. I think it's some the President should have shortly after the decisions, or at least by now, have gotten on a television uh, network or radio and spoken as the chief executive of this government to the good people of the South urging them to support the decision of the Supreme Court as the law of the land, whether they believed in it or not. On September 27, 1958, the nine students attended their first classes at Central High. The conflict and struggle to integrate schools throughout the South would continue for years. Brown v. Board of Education was a monumental decision that impacted the country and was a breakthrough in the Civil Rights Movement. It legally ended segregation in public schools and opened the door for new achievements and job possibilities for African Americans. The case was the precedent for ending segregation and bringing down Jim Crow and other public places as well. Integration was implemented smoothly in some places such as Topeka, Kansas. However, the effect of the Supreme Court's compromise to implement their decision with all deliberate speed resulted in massive resistance by citizens of southern states creating conflict which delayed desegregation for years. Although the decision brought a legal end to segregation, schools today are still racially isolated geographically in lower socioeconomic areas with largely African American and Latino students. Schools are still found to be inferior to suburban schools. The NAACP still works to remove barriers to educational achievements so as not to compromise for only a legal ruling to end segregation, and the government also continues their pursuit of educational opportunities for all children. I didn't understand what was happening then, but it was clear that Brown versus the Board of Education was a necessary victory. It might have been a little flame, but it served to set off a mighty flame. To me, the impact of Brown is best seen in the increasing numbers of black professionals today. These are the people that after 1954 were able to have some degree of choice. This surely made a difference in their aspirations and their achievements. The decision in Brown v. Board of Education brought an end to segregation in public schools and was a milestone of the Civil Rights Movement. Despite the Supreme Court compromise to implement their ruling with all deliberate speed, African Americans fought through adversity and conflict to bring an end to Jim Crow.